today we are starting the next unit of our text that is diffraction and this is the first part of the unit and we will be covering the topics of we will be defining diffraction then Huygens theory for diffraction in the classes of diffraction that is Fresnel and Fraunhofer diffraction and diffraction at a single slit double slit and half period zones. So these are the topics that we will be covering in the today's lecture. So we start with the diffraction. The Sommerfield defined diffraction as any deviation of light rays from rectilinear paths which cannot be interpreted as reflection or refraction. So this is a very vague definition like uh, Apart from any, uh, of, uh, apart from the phenomena of reflection and refraction, any deviation is termed as diffraction. So later on, people try to elaborate it further, and uh, on the basis that light is always traveling in straight lines, but when light waves uh, bend or change their path near the barrier they tend to bend around and that barrier and becomes scattered so further people based on this criteria people define diffraction of light as that which occurs when a light wave pa passes by a corner or through an opening or slit that is physically the approximate size of or even is smaller than that of light's wavelength so this is something uh, more uh, specific and most of the books you will find diff diffraction as being defined as bending of light around the edges. So diffraction is simply the change in path of light when it crosses through an edge or certain sharp object. So a very simple demonstration of diffraction it can be conducted by holding your hand in front of a light source like you see in the figure and slowly crossing the two fingers while observing the light transmitted between them. As the fingers approach each other and come very close together, you begin to see a series of dark lines parallel to the fingers. The parallel lines are actually the diffraction pattern. So this phenomena can also occur when light is bent around particles that are on the same order or magnitude as the wavelength of light. That is in the Armstrong, thousands of Armstrong. And a good example for this diffraction of sunlight by clouds when we see the silver lining in the clouds like you see in the picture. The terms diffraction and scattering are also often confused. So diffraction describes a specialized case of light scattering in which an object with regularly repeating features produce an orderly diffraction of light in a diffraction pattern. In a scatter, uh, scattering, you need not have a definite pattern, but in diffraction, you will get a pattern. In the real world, most objects are very complex in shape and should be considered to be composed of individual diffraction features that can collectively produce a random scattering of light. So Huygens tried to explain this diffraction by considering that every point on a primary wave front serves as the source of a spherical secondary wavelets such that the primary wave front at some later time is the envelope of these wavelets. The wavelets advance with a speed and frequency equal to that of the primary wave at each point in a space. So you see in the figure, this is the primary wave. This is a slit. And after the slit, each point of the slit becomes the source of a secondary wave. And these secondary wavelets contain all the properties of the primary wave. And the overall diffraction is the sum of these secondary waves. In 1818, the Fresnel, by using Huygens' concept of secondary wavelets, 
and Young's explanation of interface developed the diffraction theory of the scalar waves. So this is the Fresnel's theory. There's a point P0, which is a source. Light from this point P0, which is at a distance from the aperture, comes to the uh, aperture in the form of a spherical wavelet, which is described by this expression. And according to Huygens principle, second wavelets will start at the aperture and will add at the image point. The secondary wavelets emanating from this uh, aperture will add to produce a diffraction pattern at the screen, which will be described by this formula where k is the obliquity factor. They are not going into details of the mathematics that is not required here. So based on the distance of the object and the screen, the diffraction can be classified into two. When the distance between the screen and the object is finite, then the diffraction is called Fresnel diffraction. And when the distance is large and is infinite, then the diffraction is called from first. Now we start with the diffraction at a single slit. We consider a slit of width is small a. Incident wave is coming to the slit. And after diffraction from the slit, what we get on the screen is the central bright fringe and alternate dark and bright fringes. So the central bright fringe is due to the explanation by Huygens that the wavelets from all points in the slit travel about the same distance to reach the center of the pattern and thus all these are in phase. Whereas other bright fringes are approximately halfway between the adjacent dark fringes. So for uh, understanding the theory, we should divide the slit into two. The upper width is A by 2 and the down width is also A by 2. When we extend to P1, a light ray from R1 from this point and from the lower point, there is another ray R2. Both meet at point P1. We want the wavelets along these two rays to cancel each other when they arrive at P1. A central axis is drawn from the center of the screen and to the point P0. The wavelets of the pair of rays coming from R1 and R2 in phase within the slit because they originate from the same wave front passing through the slit along the width of the slit. In order to produce the first dark fringe, they must be out of phase by E1 by 2 when they reach the point P1. This phase difference is due to the path difference with the path traveled by the wavelet R2 to reach point P1 being longer than the path traveled by the wavelet R1. This will be shorter and this will be longer. The mathematics similar to the Young double slit experiment and other experiment that we saw in interference. And uh, using the mathematics, we arrived that the path difference between the rays R1 and R2 is A upon 2 into sine theta, whereas theta is the angle of the ray R2 with the baseline, with the central axis. So for the first minima, this a by 2 sin theta pi difference should be equal to lambda by 2. Simplifying it, we get a sin theta is equal to lambda. This is for the first minimum. So for the mth minimum, we can generalize this expression as a sin theta is equal to m lambda, where lambda m can, be ha can have values from 1 to 3 and so on. So this is the pattern. This is the central maxima. There are other minimals. So for the diffraction at double slit, there we have two slits. 
which are represented by a1 b1 and a2 b2 these slits are narrow and rectangular in shape and the plane of these slits are perpendicular to the plane of the paper a monochromatic plane wave front of wavelength lambda is incident normally on both the slits p0 corresponds to the central bright maximum the intensity distribution of the on the screen is the combined effect of the interference of diffracted secondary waves from the slits the intensity at the point p1 on the screen is obtained by applying the fraunhofer diffraction theory at the single slit and interference of diffracted waves from the two slits the diffracted wave amplitude due to single slit at an angle theta with respect to the incident beam is given by a into sin alpha by alpha where 2 alpha is the phase difference between the secondary wavelets arising at the end points of the slit now we, we notice this figure and we take triangle a1 b1 c this triangle so from this triangle sin theta is equal to b1c upon a1 b1 a1 b1 is this is the width of the slit which we take a small e so we can reduce it to b1c is equal to e sin theta and the corresponding phase difference will be 2 by pi lambda into e sin theta the diffracted wave amplitude a into sin alpha by alpha the two slits combine to produce interference now we consider the triangle a1 a2 d it is bigger triangle here the part difference a2 d is equal to e plus b e is the width of the slit and b is the width of the opaque portion between the slits it will be e plus b sin theta and the corresponding phase difference will be 2 pi by lambda into this part difference so applying the theory of the interference of the wave amplitudes at the two slits gives the resultant wave amplitude which is 2a now when the, we have two, three cases when the width of the slit is equal to the width of the opaque portion Yeah, or e is equal to b we substitute this into the here so in that condition the part difference become e sin theta which will be equal to n lambda and e sin theta will be uh, for mth ring will be equal to m lambda when we divide these two equations we will get n is equal to 2 that means for n is equal to 2 4 6 even number the interference of if m is 1 2 3 the n will be equal to 2 4 6 6. that means the interference order of these 2 4 6 will be missing in the diffraction pattern if twice the width of the slit is equal to the width of the opaque portion then the equation reduces to 3 sin theta m is equal to n lambda and for mth it is e sin theta m is equal to m lambda now dividing we get n is equal to 3 m under these conditions we see that the orders 3 6 9 and the multiples of 3 will be missing in the diffraction now if the term e plus b is equal to e that means the quantity b is zero that means there is no opaque portion between the two slits or it tends to zero it is uh, very thin we can consider that the two slits are joined so in that case the diffraction pattern will be the same as the single slit of width 2e we can see the difference between the pattern of the single and the double slits in a single slit diffraction light is spreads out in a line perpendicular to the slit no particular interference phenomena are observed 
in a double slit diffraction the light diffracts and passing through the slits but the light coming from those slits interfere with each other to produce an interference pattern on the screen the light is spread out in a line like the straight slit like a single straight slit but here there is a difference producing regions of constructive and destructive interference and a very bright spot at the center of the screen that we call maxima so that was about the diffraction at the slits now we come to fresnel's half period zone these were the zones created by fresnel to explain the phenomena of diffraction and according to fresnel the entire wave front can be divided into a large number of periods of zones which are also called fresnel's half period zones and the resultant effect at any point on the screen is due to the combined effect of these secondary waves coming from various zones now we suppose a b c d as a plane wave front and to find its effect at a point p we consider a sphere of radius d plus lambda by 2 with center at p then this sphere will cut the wave in a form of a circle and the circular cone called the fresnel first half period zone so this is the first circle we called it at first half period zone a sphere of radius b plus cool uh, lambda by 2 with center at p1 will cut the wave front in the circle 2 when we uh, simply multiply this wavelength by 2 we get the second circle and similarly the nth circle by multiplying the wavelength by n in this way we get the n half period zone and the peripheral area enclosed between the nth circle and the n minus 1th circle is defined as the nth half period zone. so nth half period zone is the area enclosed between the nth circle and the circle just next to it half period zone is the area between the two circles the radius of the half period zone is given by rn is equal to under root n into d lambda so we see that the radius is dependent on n but when we find the area of the half period zone which is equal to the area of the bigger circle minus the area of the inner circle we see that the area is independent of the number of the zone that means all the half period zones are having the same area which is pi into d lambda the mean distance of the observation point p from the nth half period zone is called dn and this is the expression for that and the phase difference between the half period zones is the phase difference between the wavelets originating from the two consecutive half period zones and reaching the point p is pi or the path difference of lambda by 2 or the time difference of t by 2 the phase difference between any two even or odd number half period zones is 2 pi the amplitude of the light at point p due to the nth half period zone is this an upon dn into 1 plus cos theta n where 1 plus cos theta n is called the obliquity factor on increasing the value of n the value of rn goes on decreasing and the resultant amplitude the wavelets from the two consecutive half period zones meet in opposite pairs as the point p and the resultant amplitude at r1 r at p is equal to r1 minus r2 plus r3 you can notice the alternate minus sign because the two consecutive are in opposite direction r1 is opposite to r2 r3 is opposite to r4 and so on. when n is equal to infinity then r n minus 1 is equal to r n is equal to 0 that is for the large number of half period zones the amplitude of the light at point p due to whole wave front is half the amplitude due to the first half period zones 
and the ratio of the amplitudes due to consecutive half period zones is constant and is less than 1. If we want to calculate the resultant intensity, which is happens to be the square of the amplitude, <coughs> will be proportional to R1 square by 4. And the most common applications of these Fresnel half period zones are in the overhead projectors, where one can find in the classroom and in the beacons of the lighthouses. Sometimes it can be found in light handled magnifiers. Illumination and SLR photographic cameras. Fresnel lenses is a part, particular case of diffraction lenses. More recently, a evolution of Fresnel lenses is used in some photographic lenses from Nikon and Canon. The Fresnel lenses offer a very short focal length and a very bright, big aperture. But it is very difficult to produce them with high quality or high resolution optical systems. So this was the zone plate and uh, Fresnel half period zones and a device based on these half period zones can be constructed which is called zone plate which we'll be discussing in the lecture next lecture. So we are ending, ending the lecture here and uh, the rest of the topics of diffraction we will be taking up in the next class. So I thank you all for patient listening and I request you all to put your comments on the comment box and the questions also with your email ID so that I can respond to your queries and uh, please uh, subscribe to the channel and that's all for today.